Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Happy Monday. And it will be Monday when you're seeing this. And we will be over in the comments and interacting with you over there. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. Yeah. And so how's your week? Busy. It was a busy week. I, it's always busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And let's see, what did we do this week? We got homeschool done. That's always a big check. Right. Uh, we started working on our back porch. So that's really exciting. I'm sure y'all will get to see the footage of that this week coming mm -hmm. up in the family vlog. So that is beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited about the back porch. That has been like on our list of things to do since we moved here and you know, mm -hmm. it's all priorities, y'all. So right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, finally are getting that done. So mm -hmm. that's super exciting. So how about you? Yes. Um we have painters in our house now. So that is super exciting. The wallpaper's coming down. <laughs> it's funny, we got a comment that was like, oh, say keep the wallpaper. And we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that's really exciting. That's Just, really cool. Yeah. yeah, getting electrical work done this week and okay. um, in the paint. So getting closer. Yay. So exciting. A fresh coat <laughs> of paint will just make such a right. difference. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. it'll be way more easy to maintain mm -hmm. than the wallpaper right. too. So. Yes. Yeah, especially in the bathroom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so. thank you all for your support and um, sweet comments too. We got a lot of sweet comments. So excited for us. So that's really nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we're excited for y'all too. We right. can't wait till you get over there yes. and yep. get to go visit mm -hmm. and all of that. That would be lots of fun. Right. So this week we're talking about a really interesting topic and um, it's something that I think we both have uh, some experience with mm -hmm. and that is homesteading with little children. Right. So mm -hmm. if y'all have little ones and you have any interest in any aspects of homesteading at all, um, hang in here because right. we're going <laughs> to be chatting about that today. So, um, so we started homesteading, my older, I, I had older ones, so I didn't okay. experience like having little, little ones okay. when they're all little. Okay. So we had a lot of help. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm trying to remember when my oldest one, Matthew, I believe he was 13. Oh, okay. So, All right. Okay. So they were already a lot of help. Okay. <laughs> and, in that way. And but, when did Joy get her first horse? Was she? Uh, nine. She nine, was nine, ten years old. Okay. Yes. So she was pretty right. responsible by right. that point. To and it wasn't just like one day out of the blue, like, Mommy or Daddy, I want a horse. I mean, she had been, since she was three years old, she loved horses and right. she read up on them and very diligently <laughs> studying. So it wasn't like, just, oh, please have a horse. It was, she was right. really um, diligent in studying up until that point. So that's why we got her a horse. <laughs> and then did you just dive into like all things homesteading as far as animals and outside? We pretty much, we probably did it backwards <laughs> okay. from what we were supposed to do, I guess, if there's a right or wrong way. Um, we had got the horses even before we had horse shelters. Okay. So it probably was not the wisest choice to be honest. Right. But it all worked out. It all worked out. And, right. uh, but if we could do it again, uh, we would definitely, because um, we got animals before we planted the garden, before we did okay. fruit trees. So if we could do it again, I think we would do it opposite. We would do the garden and fruit trees first, yes. building the animal pens, and then getting the animals. I know, that's not but as exciting. <laughs> it isn't, it isn't. I don't know, how, I don't know no. who really knows that, but <laughs> no. that is what they tell you to right. do. And they tell you like, start out with honeybees. Right. And, you know, just like the yeah. real right. easy, low maintenance <clears throat> kind of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, so you had helpers built in, and then yes. how interested in homesteading was your husband at that point? Very interested. Oh, okay. yes. Okay. We we came from a track home, and we uh, we had a garden, okay, a little tiny garden, and we did plant fruit trees, but uh, at that point, he was wanting more on a bigger scale. Okay. He wanted um, to plant more vegetables and more fruit, so we started reading up more on okay. our food and just the health benefits of even just growing your own food. Okay. So okay. we were both into it. Okay. So. 
and yeah. he was pretty much like as far as the animal tours and all that stuff was he yes well even though we had older ones and they did a lot of the animals they still somewhat needed sure. parents help i mean we have to pay for the food and right. even just scooping up manure you know yeah. we had to help so um but he was on board you know okay it, yeah okay um, all right okay. <laughs> the most all right okay. yeah so in our situation um i had i'm trying to think we had our oldest um, son and he was three when we got chickens so um so then we probably did have our second son too at that point because there we had three under three so so yeah i guess we Okay, so let me back up. So we had three under three. So our oldest son was three when we got chickens, and then we had the two babies. Mm -hmm. And that um, was interesting. I mean, it was fun. We ordered like, I don't know, six or nine baby chicks, and we raised them up together. And of course, our three-year-old, he, he loved it. I mean, right. he was totally into it. <laughs> And then um, him and TD worked together and made a little A-frame chicken tractor mm -hmm. with a little like nesting area in the front. And um, and that was kind of our mm -hmm. start at homesteading. And then we had a patio off the back of the house, just a concrete patio and a fenced in, just a little traditional backyard. So I just got um, plastic tote containers and um, cut holes in the bottom of them and just whatever I could plant or grow in those little plastic right. containers That was our garden um, for our first year and then the second year I dug out a little spot in the front yard and I did um, Strawberries and peas and just a few little things. I mean it was probably like four by six or something It was mm -hmm. small, right. um, but just to kind of get my feet wet um, and then I had a friend at the time and she was she came from a farm She grew up on a dairy farm, but then she moved to the area where we were and She her husband was like no way you are not growing anything oh, wow. here like <laughs> no like he was totally against it right. so she was so funny she would sneak and plant like lettuce <sighs> And tomatoes like in her garden beds. Uh -huh. So it would be like flower tomato plant. Like yeah. <laughs> the funniest thing. But he said it was fine. As long as she kept it in the garden bed, then it was okay. okay. And yeah. then she worked on him and then like a couple years down the road, he let her have pots and she had them in the driveway. Okay. So she just had like all right. little stuff growing in the driveway right. and pots. But um so that was kind of our start, just container gardening and chickens. And eventually, as the boys got older, we got some goats. And we just had a little area in the side of our yard. Um, so it was just very, very contained. And at that point, I was following, um, I think it's called Little Homestead in the City. It's the Dervey family out in California. And they are like almost 100% mm -hmm. self-sufficient on in the city like mm -hmm. a little postage stamp mm -hmm. kind of um, backyard that they have and they have chickens and goats and rabbits and um, lots of things mm -hmm. that they grow and all of that right. so that really inspired me and we were kind of uh, we had more room than they did mm -hmm. but we were kind of going with that model of just very contained and controlled environment and um, and it worked, you know, it worked. It's a lot of work, I think, right. doing it. Um, the goats were a lot of work, doing it in a very, very contained right. area because you have mud and you have, and then it's just, it seemed like a lot of input and a lot of work mm -hmm. to have them so contained versus if you had a pasture or right. something where they could just right. be out and free, you yeah. know. So. Um, so the goats I probably wouldn't do again like that, mm -hmm. but the chickens mm -hmm. were a huge success. Right. You know, we really enjoyed them, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that was our little bit of experience with homesteading with little ones. Mm -hmm. And um, so it can be done. Um, I think you should take uh, baby steps with it. Right. And especially, like, um, in my experience, that's why I was asking, um, 
JM mm -hmm. about how much um, input her husband had into it right. because my husband was working long, long hours at that point. So he was right. supportive and he was like, sure, that's a great mm -hmm. idea. That's a great idea. But that was really it. Like right. all of the rest was up to me to right. do. Um, and I was home all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was happy to do it. But um, I mean, he wasn't really... Right. Other than financially supporting it, he right. wasn't into it. You yeah. Know? So, so that was kind of where we yeah. were. Yep. So, um, so it can be done, and I would just say baby steps. Yes. You know, just keep it get, simple. Keep it simple. Get a few little chickens. Something right. very doable on a small scale. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just be able to enjoy it. Yes, especially when you just have little ones, because. <laughs> The expectations of a little one trying to do all that, it's not likely <laughs> that yeah. you're going to be able, you're going to have to do it. So Yeah. yeah. And, and there's going to be in mind. cold days and rainy days yes. and days that it's just too hot right. for them to be out there. I mean, we're talking like little, like five and under, right. you know, yeah. um, they're just they're little right. and they just, they can't do it all. Right. I mean, they'll have, be fun and excited to go out and collect eggs with you maybe once in a while, right. but You're cleaning the coop, <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. Right. Oh, they're just not yeah. gonna, yeah. And I mean, even gardening for long periods of right. time, they're right. just not gonna be so yeah. into doing that. Um, so, but if you have two people at home maybe, mm -hmm. and you're both gung-ho into it, you know, there's all different scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're just giving you our right. experience with yes. that. So we just wanted to cover that with y'all today. And yes, hopefully that's a blessing. We don't mean it to be a discouragement no, at all. Not at all. <laughs> um, it's very doable. Right. And if you have support, maybe you have other family around. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you have a grandparent who can come and sit right. for a couple hours and you can go out and get some more gardening done. Um, right. You know, yeah. there's all kinds of and even years. something to think about, I just thought of this, that if you have older ones and you send them to school too, right. you're going to be stuck doing a lot of it too. Okay. Right. I mean, we tie all of the homesteading into their home school, so Absolutely. just life learning. So that's kind of why we chose this lifestyle too, is just learning along the way. Absolutely. Too, so. Yes. It's something to think about. Yep, absolutely. That is yeah. a big reason why yeah. we have the animals that we have right. is because it's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. It teaches responsibility and all that right. kind of stuff. And stuff. There's yeah. a million ways to teach responsibility yes. and chores and all of that, right. but um, animals are just kind of a built-in, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no-brainer. Right. Like, right. it just has to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but there's responsibility with it, and if you, yeah. especially... You know, if you just have chickens, you can still go away for mm -hmm. a vacation and things like that. Most people, um, you can find mm -hmm. someone who will, you know, put out some chicken feed for you, or you can right. load up, you know, and load up your feeder right. with extra water and chicken feed, and you'll probably be good for a week. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you have a whole farm, it gets pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, once right. you start getting more animals mm -hmm. it you kind of really are tied to yes, it and it right. does become more of a lifestyle thing so um yeah just thinking mm -hmm. ahead on those mm -hmm. things too that you know um if you enjoy going on vacations all the time and doing stuff like that do you have the supports in place right. to you know have pet sitters yes you know so. yes absolutely so absolutely. yeah and down here we're blessed we do have um good neighbors and mm -hmm. friends that right. will step in. Um, now when the cows and milk, that will be a little, right. <laughs> a little right. more, <laughs> yeah, uh, strain to put on someone. Right. Um, so, you know, if you have goats and milk, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a little bit trickier to be yeah. planning to get away and all that right. kind of stuff. But yeah, and if you have older children and you want to homestead, and you want them to be involved, and yet they're away from your home six or eight hours a day. Yeah. Um, in my experience, just the feedback that I've heard from other people even around here have said, you know, I love farming, I wanted my kids to be into mm -hmm. farming and stuff like that, but they had no interest in it. Right. You know, it's so right. um, if it's not their lifestyle, right? they might, yeah. yeah, it might just not be their yeah. thing, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. So. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, just keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. Have fun with it right. and make it enjoyable. And if yes. it's not enjoyable, don't do it. No. Because it's not worth it. No. So what kind of animals did you all have all together out there? Right. So we started off with the horses and then we got two of them. Okay. So, um, and then we got, I believe it was the chickens. I think we got six chickens to start okay. off with, okay. some egg layers, and then we got goats and pigs. And um, it's funny because we didn't just start off like with one. <laughs> we got like two or three. I don't know how if we got right. suckered into picking the whole litter or what it was. But right. um, like for instance, the pigs, we got three of them, and there was two girls and a male. And they wound up getting pregnant at the same time, so we went from three to like 24 pigs wow. within you know six months. So that was a lot. So um, I would say if you're going to start off, just really think about um, even just them having babies if that's what right. that's what you're wanting to do, because <laughs> you right. can wind up with babies, a lot of babies, and that's then right. you have to sell them. Or Unless you live here at Barren Acres, right. and you will have no babies right. at all. Right, right, right. Yeah. And you also have to think about the cost yes. too, like your vet bills, like with the horses. You know, you have a farrier coming out, sure. or a vet, sure. you know, to float their teeth. So sure. well, even with the about. goats, there were like several right. trips to the vets mm -hmm. that I ended up taking with them. Right. So we lost a couple. I mean, because they were in confined places, they had plenty of room, but they had, yeah, vet so what, bills. Oh, vet bills. bills. Yeah. yeah. So you have to take that into consideration too. Right. right. You might have vet bills. Uh, chickens, you probably mm. won't have vet bills unless you're me. And I ended up taking a chicken to the vet one time. So I won't do that again. Yeah. But it <laughs> was a life lesson mm -hmm. for sure. And a bill. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so yeah, there's always, you know, balancing out that, you know, and my husband always says, like, the cheapest part of having the animal is actually buying the animal, and right. then that's the easy part, you know, buying it, that's the cheap, easy part, the rest of it mm -hmm. is the expensive part, is taking right. care of it forever, so, um, right. yeah, so I think we've learned some lessons there, too. Yeah, and you can't expect to always, because I know we thought, like, oh, we'll sell all the babies for this much money, and right. sometimes it's not like that. Right. Especially where we lived in California, so there was a lot of, <laughs> we, we had a hard time selling farm animals there. Right, 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 yeah, and you might not be in a farming right. area and where then people you know, right. want, yeah, I mean, that even happens down here with mm -hmm. us, with the goats. I mean, I just thought they would have babies, and... I could get rid of them, and I ended up like giving goats mm -hmm. away to like anybody right. that would want them because um, not anybody that will want them. Don't hate me. Yeah, I didn't give them to anybody, but I gave but, them to our friends. We have right. two friends that yes got a lot of. They inherited a lot right. of our goats. <laughs> right. So anyway, yeah, there's lots of uh, life lessons there, but. There is a lot of benefits yes, to absolutely. being on a homestead. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have it either, I any other way. Yes, and, and one of right. the things that I started doing before we even got animals and all of that kind of stuff was just um, learning how to cook from scratch. I mean, there's a lot of homesteading skills that just tie right into um, being mm -hmm. a keeper at home and right. Being good, um, a good steward of mm -hmm. your money and your husband's uh, money and right. finances and all of that, and um, I just kind of challenge myself, like, okay, what do I buy that um, I don't have to buy anymore? Right. Like napkins, I, I stopped buying mm -hmm. napkins for years. I didn't buy napkins, paper napkins. I just um, right. got cloth napkins, or I made cloth napkins, and I loved it. And mm -hmm. I had a couple homesteading friends at the time and they had cute little baskets with all their mm -hmm. uh, little cloth napkins in there and that was super fun and I stopped buying paper towels mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the paper products I stopped that's when I started cloth diapering mm -hmm. um, there's just so many things just cooking from scratch and making your own bread right. and all of those things eating simple whole foods right right it's um, funny how just homesteading gets that in your mindset like oh i want to like start baking my own bread or yeah. i don't know it just gets your canning and yeah so canning. Really yeah. yeah yeah and i got just a little pressure canner mm -hmm. and um just started just yeah. started doing yeah. something and yeah joy and i learned too and it was so fun just canning yeah uh, jellies and tomato sauce and yeah 
Mm-hmm. Learning how to sew. Right. Um, learning how to garden. Mm-hmm. All those skills, those old skills. Right. You know, learning how to um, budget and um, and simplify your grocery list and mm-hmm. trying to get that down you right. know, to a manageable amount and cutting right. out like a lot of the pre-made stuff yes. and the box stuff and all of mm-hmm. that. That was like life-changing. Right. I mean, they were huge. Right huge changes that we were making during right. those years. So, yeah. you know, storing and having a pantry, um, mm-hmm. you know, and I would go to my grandmother's house and she would teach me, you know, how to just put together a meal and cook mm-hmm. lots of soups. Yeah. Um, and once you learn how to, I mean, it sounds so basic and so silly, but a lot of well, young girls no, today, know how to do it. you know, uh, me included, yeah, you know, me you, too. <laughs> you know, you didn't know how to make right. soup. Like if it didn't come from a can, right. How would you yeah. make it? Yeah. You know, there has to be a recipe for it. Right. You know, and then you just you learn. Right. So yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people probably don't know that about us either. Like I was not raised on a homestead right. at all. Like right. I went to school. I lived in a condo for some of my life. So this is all new. <laughs> right. So I know if I can do it, y'all can do it too. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So and then did you teach? Did you actually? Uh, yes, a child care. Yes, you did. Kindergarten. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, and you came from yes. teaching and yes, yeah, having a teaching career. kindergarten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and and that's me too. You know. So right. I this was all new to mm-hmm. both of us. All right. of these ideas of being home and um, growing things and right. making things from scratch and all of that. But it's a lot of fun. It is. And yeah. if you just look at it as a Look at it as a career. Look at it as your job. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like your number one calling in right. life really is to be a mom mm-hmm. and to, you know, be a wife to your right. husband. To and serve your family. To yeah. serve your family, yes. And even if it is just uh, you, maybe you're just a young lady who's just starting out and maybe you're not married yet, but just learn as much as right. you possibly yes. can about raising children and, mm-hmm. and cooking and right. managing a home and taking care of a husband. Right. I mean, I would just encourage you just to study that out mm-hmm. just like you were going to study out any other right. career or whatever. Right. I'm just right. saying that for lack of a better word. Right. Um, you know, just put your whole heart into it right. and really learn some of those things yes. because I didn't have any of yeah. those skills Mm-mm. going into marriage or no. mommyhood mm-hmm. or any of it so, right yes so yeah that would really be a benefit to you and don't be afraid I would say yeah, yeah. try it jump in I right. mean right when you started baking bread did it always turn out like no a perfect <laughs> no but then it was kind of easier than I thought too though right. you know so right. don't be afraid don't let it intimidate you <laughs> right 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 yeah, just, yeah. Even just making your home soap or whatever. Yeah. 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 Start yeah. off small and go from there. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. And they're all things that can be a blessing to your husband mm-hmm. and your family. And um, right. And it's just a simpler way of life. Yes. We just really enjoy yeah. it. I mean, I don't think, you know, we might go back on some things here and there. Right. You know, like right. I have obviously bought paper plates and paper right. napkins, as you all know who have followed right. our channel. Um, so we do, you go through mm-hmm. different seasons yes. of life, but the general idea and mm-hmm. concepts, you know, those life skills that you right. learn, you do carry with you. Yes, so. you do. Yeah. Even just being in the RV, you know, I miss it so much just to be able to make like a loaf of bread or something because we just don't have the space to do right. it. So right. you do miss it, like after you don't do it for a little bit. So sure. We're excited to get back into that. Yeah. And then <laughs> passing all those skills yes. on to your children. Right. And um, it's amazing. I mean, right. my, my voice can make all kinds of things. Right. It's just incredible. I mean, this afternoon um, we had some soup and we had guests over and one of them came in and I said, I need some drop biscuits. And he went ahead and just looked up some drop biscuits and put them all out and went back outside and kept doing whatever he was doing outside. And I was just like, Praise the Lord. I mean, that's right. awesome that, that awesome. you know, yeah. they have that skill to do that and they're right. not afraid of it. You know? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we just encourage y'all. Yes. And uh, a blessing to y'all. Yes. Yeah.
again. We'll see you next Monday, and we'll see you right back here. Alrighty, next Monday. <laughs> Bye, have a good week. See y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Alrighty. Why did it feel like? Love it.